So when we talk of communications, first of all the greatest thing is the communication between human beings. And when we have to think of the communication with the human beings, many people think that by aggression you will communicate better, which is not true. I mean, if somebody wants to get something out of someone, say, so you go there and just talk, I have to have, how can I do it, this, that, as it is, it's no. But if you are sweet and start talking sweetly, then ninety-nine percent will definitely dissolve. So to dissolve people with sweetness, how to do it, that trick one has to learn. How with sweetness you can dissolve people? This is one of his special qualities, that you talk to someone in such a manner, genuinely, in a very sweet manner and the problem between you and that person will be dissolved, absolutely. Now there are many tricks. How to talk to someone is one of the biggest things one has to know. <coughs> First of all, you must always show that you are less intelligent than another person. I like I am talking to scientists, I will say, I am sorry I don't know any science, you know, no good for scientists, so they feel, oh, very good. <laughs> if you have to talk to some musician, you must say, I don't know any music. No, I just, I've learned little bit but not much. Musician feels very happy. You may call it a pampering of the ego, you may call it. But there's no harm in saying that I'm nothing compared to you. So the first trick is complete humility when you talk to another person. It's a sign of greatness, it's a sign of fulfillment. At the trees, when they are laden with fruits, they bend down. So the first of all, if you say, I am no one, I don't understand anything, uh, but I would like to hear. This is first. First quality of communication is to be extremely humble about yourself. The another person should not know who you are. And there's a lot of fun in it. Say for example now, say, I can say about myself uh, that my husband was very highly placed in India. But I met a friend in Delhi, she was studying with in school and in college. And uh, she asked me, where do you live? I told her in Meenabak, which was just a useless, small little place meant for very ordinary officers because we, they had not allotted us any house or anything. So temporarily we were there. She said, what? What is your husband doing? I said, doing so with some government servant. I didn't tell her. He came down. So he just looked at me, smiled. He said, do you know him? I said, he's my husband. She was shocked. He's your husband? Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? Immediately the whole thing changed. And she felt so ashamed of herself. She had started looking down upon me, that I married to some clerk or someone, something. So, 
The best thing is to play it out. Play it out, everything. Now, I know of certain Sahaja Yogis, they say, Oh, Mother has given Me such powers, I can do this, I can do that. This boastfulness is of no use. I haven't got any powers, you see, I just I am a Sahaja Yogi, that's all. But if you want, I can try. So, is to play down as much as you can. Practice this at home. First practice and then don't do it. So that is one of the greatest qualities of communication with others. Second thing I think in the whole of Gita, if you read it, this one very important thing is it. Krodhat Pijayati Samoha. See, among all the worst things that we have, according to him, we have six uh, enemies. But in Gita, he started with Krodh. He said, starts with Krodh, with anger. If you have anger within you, then you are not a master at all. There's no need for a master to get angry because he can play about. He can make you dance like this. What is the need to lose your temper? But that mastery, if, if you don't have, of handling people, then after five, six minutes of talk, your voice starts raising and a sort of a something starts barking. Because that temper is still inside you burning, but for a master there should be no temper, no need. He has started with Krodha, that with the Krodha all problems stopped, from one to another, to another, to another. So we should watch out if we are angry people. Anger comes from Vishuddhi. Starts from liver, Vishnu, but expressed through Vishuddhi. Face becomes red, eyes become red. From the mouth, you see, you start saying all kinds of horrible things, and the whole expression becomes so different when you are angry. So, this anger is to be seen. Where is it? Within us, where is it, this anger? Liver? All right, I'll put it right. So to master it, you have to face yourself clearly. Many people have seen, people say, Mother, you know, this lady is such a hot-tempered woman, she's so dominating, she does this, she does that. But if you tell her, say, no, no, I don't do that way, no, no, I'm very good. But how others are saying that? I don't know, but I'm very good, finished. If somebody is saying that, then you watch yourself. Do you get into tempers or not? Are you losing your temper? It's very easy to make it out and face. So the trick of the trade is to face yourself and see for yourself how much you are lacking. So first is humility, which is, should be genuine, and secondly, is equanimity, no temper. There is no need to take to temper. At the most you can say, hey, what are you doing? Why are you doing that way? Now if you do something, you know, maybe something I might say which I do not like, so I don't want to say like that. At the most, up to that point is all right, that you should say that I dislike it but not to go further with it. If you just stop at a point, then this habit of getting into temper will go away, this arrogance will go away, which has to go. This arrogance has to go, this temper has to go, and then you'll be surprised, you'll feel very much relieved. Because this anger, 
Once it comes in, reacts and catches your left vishuddhi and you become guilty. You feel very bad, why I said so, I should not have said this. So vishuddhi is finished. Left vishuddhi means it's a headache. It goes on accumulating like a storehouse there, all your anger, temper, whatever you have, and this left vishuddhi catches. And you know the problems of left vishuddhi. So if you get angry with someone, don't feel guilty, but go before the mirror and slap yourself nicely, twice, twice. Now you get angry with yourself, let me get angry, then stand before the mirror, shoot, 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 like that. In the same manner as you get angry, try to act. See, you never feel guilty or maybe more angry would be better. So you empty out your left vishuddhi. Next time you won't do it. But feeling guilty means you'll again repeat and repeat and repeat the same thing. So this temper is expressed by men differently and women by differently. And I'm very much worried about the women sometimes because they take to water power when I'm lost. But those who have ego too much cry much more, that's the sign. I've seen, if you say anything to them, immediately they start crying. Because already the left vishuddhi is there full, like a full balloon, when you touch them it becomes water. But men, their temper is different style, as you know very well that when they get angry, they might fight with each other, box everyone and then settle down nicely and have something to drink. <laughs> Let us have it out, you see, they'll say, take out. But women don't, they keep it there. And once they keep it, then it becomes tears, it starts coming down. So these are just tears out of joy, happiness, that's different, or out of feelings for others, but it's not that, but it's tears just to impress another person that you are very sad or something.